I will throw the phone number out to the people. If you have thoughts on Michigan State, Notre Dame, get them out. But let, let me start by saying this. There is a 50-50 split with blame for Michigan State's outright choke job. Let me repeat that for you. Choke job. You want to see the definition of choke in the dictionary, you will see the Michigan State Spartans. What I saw on Saturday night in a driving rain, with my onions soaked, with my voice shattered, was an out-and-out choke job. <laughs> choke. Man, we didn't need that this morning, buddy boy. From the very top to John L. Smith to the very last player on this football team with an irrelevant number and no name. It was an out-and-out -out choke job. You will never sell me that Notre Dame won that football game. On the contrary, Moan Frere, Michigan State handed it away like a nice three-button coat at the Salvation Army. Now let's play the blame game. Everybody wants to know, what does Mikey V think? Whoa, whoa, Mike must be real upset. Yeah, no, no, really? I'm absolutely furious. It's a 50-50 split on blame. 50% of it goes to my boy, Drew Stanton. I love Drew, but I got bad news for you. I can't defend you when you play that way. And as bad of a job as that coaching staff did, putting you in bad spots, you have to make better decisions. You got to make plays. You want to be an all-Big Ten quarterback, you want to be the big shot. You want to be an All-American. Drew, I can't help you. You can't have the last three drives of that game beyond you with three turnovers. You can't. You can't throw a pick six. You can't throw a game-ending interception. And you can't fumble on your doorstep. You just can't do it. As much as I defend Drew Stanton, not today. I can't make that case. Drew played very poorly. First half, he lit it up. Second half, I thought the coaches did an absolutely disgraceful job of getting Drew in rhythm and allowing him to make plays. But late in that game, Drew had the opportunity to simply eat the football and keep that clock moving. He didn't do it. He made bad reads. He made bad decisions. And ultimately, had a big hand in them losing this football game. That's on Drew Stanton. And you know what? It's time for Drew to step up in a big game. It's time for Drew to play the way he plays against Kent State and Indiana and Hawaii and Illinois. And you know what? It's time to put it up against the big boy or I can't defend you anymore, Drew. Played real well against Notre Dame for two and a half quarters last year. Held on for a victory. You played real well for a half against Michigan or for three quarters against Ohio State. It's time to play, Drew. And not all of it's on this kid. And that leads me to the second point. The rest of Drew Stanton's teammates ought to be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed. That was despicable. What went down in the second half of that game? Despicable. And I'm not going to call out individual players. Me saying Drew Stanton didn't play well is different than sitting here and calling out kids for choking. I'm not going to sit here and name the kids that choked. But let me tell you something. There's a bunch of them up there in East Lansing. A bunch. And it hurts my heart to say it. But you know what? Every single stereotype about Michigan State University football came true on Saturday night. They choked. They absolutely gagged. While Notre Dame played with fire, emotion, poise, and tact, Michigan State sat there and choked on applesauce. They choked. Sounds like you choked. They already. choked. So, no, I'm not going to name names. But they absolutely choked. Okay, hey, 
Time, let's say, whoa, 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 no, 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 let's take a time out. You're not going to be able to finish. If Mike, you you're, you're losing your voice. My voice Mike, is stop. Gone, it's you're because... losing your voice already. I was busy firing up my section. I did my job. I paid my $75, and I got a bunch of old asses off their feet into the air and got them cheering their ass off. Okay. I didn't joke. I showed up I, to I play. Know. But buddy, I'm not finished. But, but, but we're 12 minutes into the show. Don't want to hear but it. But you're about to lose your voice, let, Mike. Let, just let me get done with this. Okay, you're not going to be able to finish. It doesn't matter. No oh boy. Doesn't matter. Drew Stanton needs help. He can't do it alone. And you know what I saw at the end of that game? I saw a kid that had an entire program on his back. And he had the other 22 guys who play begging him, telling him, look, we can't do anything. Help us. You know what? It's time for everybody else to step up. Drew made a lot of bad decisions, a lot of bad plays. But I'll be damned if there are a lot of players in this country that can do it all by themselves. Don't get it twisted. He ain't Vince Young. Even Vince had help. I'm disgusted with the guys that strap on those uniforms. Make plays! You're at home, at night, third largest crowd in the history of that stadium, with a 37-21 lead. Make plays! Don't sit there and pucker! Make plays! You don't sit there and turn to your quarterback and with a puppy dog look, and say, help us! We don't know what we're doing out here! Help us! Make plays! Stand together as a team and make plays! Now let me get to the coaches. Oh no. Wait, 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 stop, wait, stop, wait. Before you go, before you go, hang on. Drink. We, we, yeah, we, get, no, drink some of that water. Yeah. No. Hey, we're going to have to get this guy some hot drink. tea and honey. I'm not fooling around, but I know you're not, but, you're, but your voice is leaving, Mike. You don't realize it. You know what? I've been begging for a day off. Good. Now let me finish. Just sit back, because I ain't fooling around. This weekend pissed me off. Obviously. I tried. Let me get to the coaches, because it's 50% on them. How about the good time you had with your dad this weekend? Tom, I'm not screwing around. This okay. is what I discussed with you. Shut up. 50% is on the coaches. Let me start in the first half. Before the half ends, Notre Dame has the football with a little over a minute. I told you. This is not going to happen. Let me finish. You're not going to be able to finish. Mike, listen to your voice. Michigan State is pounding Notre Dame. And they took their foot off the accelerator. They mismanaged the clock. Again. They didn't use their timeouts right. Again. And they allowed the opponent to get into halftime and make adjustments. Again. It's the same tired ass story. Note to John L. Smith. Learn the effing rules and understand that your timeouts are not like cell phone minutes. They don't carry over. <laughs> Notre Dame got away. They had him by the throat. And instead of cutting it real deep and watching the blood squirt all over, you let him get into halftime so fat boy could feed him pudding. Second of all, Shame on this coaching staff for puckering. It is evident to me they cannot coach with a lead. 38-17 in Notre Dame last year. Pucker, pucker, pucker. Pucker up, change what you're doing, and allow the opposition back in. 34-17 in Michigan two years ago. Pucker, pucker, pucker. It's the same story. Now, look, I can't totally sit here and tell you it's all Dave Baldwin's fault. It's not. The offensive line was atrocious. But here's where the coaching staff is liable. J.U. Colquitt was a bowling ball. Yet Javon Ringer saw exclusive carries in the second half. Explain it. 
somebody in East Lansing today have the balls to ask Dave Baldwin, where the hell was J.U. Corcoran? It was clear Notre Dame didn't want any part of him. They didn't want to touch him. Corcoran was a beast. Yet Javon Ringer saw all the carries. Second of all, what the hell are you doing in the shotgun in a monsoon? You're asking Drew Stander on the option in Hurricane Katrina. You're coming out five wide. Run the football. Third of all, and this is where I really get upset. Get Chris Schmeelin out of town. He is the single worst defensive coordinator ever born into this world. This guy is absolutely atrocious. Hey, Schmeelin, here's an idea. you got your secondary floating around on dinghies. Maybe it's not a good idea to bring back-to-back -back zero blitzes with no safety help. Maybe. Let alone the fact your stupid-ass blitz packages never get home. Ever. Ever. You are the worst defensive coordinator ever. I would rather have HR puffing stuff with Teddy Ruxpin as an assistant than to have you in this booth one more week. You're atrocious. Take your wristbands and stick them. The same communication breakdowns that we have seen since you got here end up costing us another game. Not to mention the fact you put the kids in terrible spots. What are you blitzing like that for? Have you ever heard of a zone blitz? You know, the same thing that Notre Dame did to Drew, dropping 2D tackles and getting a pick? Have you ever heard of disguised coverages? How about giving your kids safety help in the middle of a monsoon? Don't leave them on an island. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of dealing with this. These kids fought their asses off. And yes, they puckered. Yes, they choked. But the coaches weren't there to put them in good spots. Third and three, up by two scores in the middle of a monsoon. Dave Baldwin throwing the football. And they come back late. you got to run to win. And you don't put your most important back in the game. Here's another idea. Why wasn't the field goal unit ready at the end of the game? God forbid if they tripped over themselves and gained 20 yards. They wouldn't have even gotten a field goal off. The unit wasn't even ready. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. I just dropped my father off at the airport. Guy feels terrible about himself. Had to watch another one of these things, 640 miles, thank you, Northwest, to see that. You know what the sick part is? He only gets to one game a year, and this is at least the third time he's caught this crap. I'm tired. I'm hurt. I'm, I'm emotional. I'm shot. I got nothing left. I got nothing left. You got kids taking a knee on kickoffs inexplicably. You got a senior quarterback who's put in awful spots and then makes, in turn, awful decisions. You're not putting the best 11 guys out on the field. And you know what? Defensively, they may not be good, but I'll be damned. They were doing an unbelievable job without bringing the house on Brady Quinn. Why bring it in a monsoon? Why? I'm not asking you to rush three. I'm not asking you to play prevent. It's called a middle ground. Find it. But back to back, zero coverage blitzes with no safety help are suicide. Especially because your blitzes never get home. Ever. Lastly, when I speak of Michigan State and I talk about what they should be, what they can be, what they might be, it's nights like Saturday. Games like Saturday that are every reason they're not. And this is not just the John L. Smith issue. It is this staff. 
I think when push comes to shove, John L. Smith is probably a decent football coach. But this staff is killing him. This staff is killing him. He delegates too much power to them. You tell me if Nick Saban were around, tell me he wouldn't take this defense over next week. But instead, John L.'s playing buddy system. Chris Meeland's his boy. Chris Meeland should have been fired after 2004. How does guy still collect some paychecks beyond me? Full rack of calls. We'll get to you coming up. And eventually, Foster will talk. 1270 XYT. It's a cold third strike. And for the first time in 19 years. To make better plays, so I don't have a lot to say other than that. Get up tomorrow and go to work. 1270 XYT, the sports station. <clears throat> Mike and Terry back with you. I got one other thing to cover, then we'll get back into the calls. Or I should I say open the phone calls up for real, and then maybe I'll have Foster talk at some point. There's one other thing that drives me out of my mind, and it's the fact that this coaching staff, just like Nick Saban, just like Bobby Williams, just like George Burles, how many times does it have to happen before it changes? How many times is John L. Smith going to have a lead and then take his foot off the pedal? <clears throat> how many times are they not going to finish an opponent? The whole country's laughing at you. The whole country's laughing at us. Desmond Howard's on TV Saturday night laughing at us. Cackling. The whole country's laughing at Michigan State. And you know what he said? And it's so true. It makes me sick. But it's so damn true. Only Michigan State could pull this off. There's not another team in the country except our beloved Spartans that could pull this off. 37-21 in a hurricane at home. And Notre Dame's rocking and rolling to a comeback. I'm tired. I'm sick. I'm disgusted. I'm hurt. I'm angry. I run, I run the gamut. I got a car where all four of my car seats are soaked two days later. I drove home in a car silent for an hour and a half on, on Sunday morning. 1.30 in the morning, leaving Michigan State. Silent. Three people not saying a word to each other. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the Saturday nights. I'm tired of thinking about what could have been. I'm tired of thinking about what should have been. Get it done. You're up 37-21 in a hurricane. Win the game. 